VOA One, the hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson, and I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower, and we use words and phrases, especially written for people learning English. Coming up on the program, Mario Ritter Jr. reports on scientists collecting fish samples from an area near Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant. They are looking into the effects of the recent release of treated radioactive water from the plant into the sea. Gregory Stockel has a story on people making wine using ancient and natural methods. Dan Friedel and Ana Mateo reports on low water levels in northern Brazil, which is affecting wildlife near the Amazon River. Later, John Russell presents the everyday grammar lesson on grammar and disagreements. But first, here is Mario Ritter Jr. A team of international scientists collected fish samples from an area near Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant Thursday. They are examining the effects of the recent release of treated radioactive water from the plant into the sea. The study by the International Atomic Energy Agency (IAEA) is the first since the water release began in August. Local fishermen criticized the release. It also led China to ban all seafood products from Japan over food safety fears. Scientists from China, South Korea, and Canada observed the collection of fish samples at Hisanohama Port, about fifty kilometers south of Fukushima. The samples will be sent to laboratories in each country for independent testing, the UN Nuclear Agency said. Paul McGinnity is a research scientist with the IAEA overseeing the study. He said the Japanese government has requested that we do this. And one of the reasons they want us to do this is to try and strengthen confidence in the data that Japan is producing. More than a million metric tons of water was contaminated by contact with fuel at the nuclear reactor following the 2011 earthquake and tsunami disaster. Before being released. The water is filtered to remove isotopes, leaving only tritium, which is difficult to separate. Plant operator Tepco said the levels of tritium in the water are weakened to below official limits. The IAEA says that tritium. Is a naturally occurring radioactive form of hydrogen that is produced in the atmosphere when cosmic rays collide with air molecules. The agency says tritium cannot enter the body through human skin. It is only harmful if ingested in very large amounts. I'm Mario Ritter Jr.
Wine made by ancient methods is gaining new fans. Wine is an alcoholic drink made from fruit like grapes. Natural wine uses methods that reduce processing and harmful effects on the earth. Research company IWSR Drinks Market Analysis found that people in the U.S. are seeking natural wine in increasing numbers. At the same time, the number of wine buyers has been dropping since 2015. Natural and other earth friendly wines made up less than 1% of sales in 2021. But demand for those wines was rising faster than other kinds on the whole, reported Drizzly, an online site for ordering and shipping wine and other alcohol. Most natural wines are made with organic grapes collected by hand. Organic growers do not use poisonous chemicals to stop or control insects or unwanted plant growth. To make wine, the grapes need to be crushed. Some wine producers crush grapes by foot, like people of ancient times. Afterwards, The crushed grapes ferment naturally. Manufacturers do not add water, yeast, or other substances. There are exceptions. Some natural winemakers add sulfites, a chemical produced naturally in grapes. Extra sulfites can help preserve or keep the wine, and some winemakers clear the final liquid. Of any small pieces that could make it look cloudy. The result is wines that are earthy and less predictable than many of the wines created by bigger producers. The first time you taste it, you can tell it's alive, said John Keller. He is the owner and winemaker at Noy Cellars in northern Michigan. But selling natural wine processes can be difficult. Natural wine has no set definition in the U.S. It is not easy to find, since most wines do not identify as such on their labels. Natural just sounds good, but conventional wine is pretty natural too, said Anita Oberholster. She is a professor in the Department of Viticulture and Enology at the University of California, Davis. If the idea of natural wine is going to grow, we should do research on it and define it. Keller of Noy Cellars has a degree in biochemistry. He started out working for a big winemaker in California. But he left because he was not happy about all the chemical mixes it used. These include gelatin, oak dust, and eggs. However, some say the line between natural and conventional wines is very narrow. Many products added to wine, like yeast, are natural products, Oberholster said. And many conventional wines are made without adding anything. Some in the industry would like to establish rules for producing natural wine. France's wine industry took such action in 2020, enacting requirements that winemakers must meet to identify their wines as natural. Some manufacturers. Argue that rules can make wine making more costly. Keller uses organic grapes, but he says he cannot support the cost of repeated inspections for approval as an organic wine. Anthony Zhang is the co-founder and CEO of Vinovest, a wine investment company. He sees another problem.
Finovest says some wine companies are profiting from the lack of rules. They use labeling content like imagery that suggests their wine making is natural when they are not, he argues. That can mislead buyers who often will pay higher prices for wines made by smaller producers that use natural methods. However, buyers may have more information on wine bottles soon. Starting in December, wines sold in the European Union will have to identify on their labeling all the substances each product contains. Oberholster expects the U.S. to pass similar measures as well in the next few years. I'm Gregory Stockel. People, animals, and fish, who depend on the waterways connected to the Amazon River close to the Brazilian city of Manaus, are facing a long period of dry weather. The city's port is an important economic area for northern Brazil, but recently. The water level of the area where the Amazon and Rio Negro rivers meet reached a very low level. The Civil Defense Agency in Amazonas State said the drought is hurting over 400,000 people. Those who have floating homes or use boats to move around on the river for work cannot travel. They cannot get fuel, food, or fresh water. Animals and fish along the river are dying. Thousands of dead fish float on the water's surface. A number of river dolphins died when they washed up on land. Dolphins are rare water mammals that live in Brazil's biggest rivers. The organization that runs the port said the water level is only about 14 meters, the lowest since measurements started in 1902. The previous all-time low came in 2010. Brazil's monitoring and disaster alert center, Semedin, said the rainfall in the Amazon area. Is the lowest it has been since July to September 1980. The nation's science ministry said the weather pattern known as El Nino is to blame for the drought and low rainfall. Reporters in the area are describing the situation as grim. Raimundo Silva do Carmo is a fisherman. But he cannot fish at this time. It takes him much of the day just to get water. One recent morning, he was making his fourth visit of the day to a well east of Manaus. He called carrying a water container back and forth dreadful work made harder because of the hot sun. Without water, he said. There is no life. Another man, Joaquim Mendes da Silva, is seventy-three. For forty-three years, he repaired ships on a large lake. The water is the lowest he has ever seen. 
Children in the area stopped going to school one month ago because they could no longer travel by boat to the schoolhouse. Along with Amazonas State, Semaden said seven other states recorded their lowest rainfall in 40 years for the period from July to September. The drought is hurting all of the waterways that connect to the Amazon River, an area that contains 20% of the world's fresh water. By last week, 42 of the 62 cities and towns in the area declared a state of emergency. In one area, about 600 kilometers east of the lake, about 300 families are having trouble getting food and supplies in the Awati Parana Reserve. They can only use small boats to get to the closest city. As a result, their travel time is 14 hours instead of the usual nine. Along the river, people fish for a large fish called a piraruku. The fish weigh as much as 200 kilograms. People catch the fish and then take them to local markets. They usually bring their catch to market by boat, but they can no longer sell the fish because they cannot reach the market. Edvaldo de Lira is a local business leader. He said the fishermen run the risk of catching fish in the lake and it arrives spoiled, so there is no way for us to fish, Delira said. Rain does not fall all year in the Amazon area. Rainfall is light from May to October. But the El Nino weather event is reducing the rain more than usual, said Ana Paula Cunha of Semaden. Climate scientists say... The effects of El Nino this year are stronger because of global warming. Warming temperatures, they say, are because of carbon gases from years of burning coal, oil, and gas. One of the important rivers in the Amazon area is the Madeira. It travels over 3,500 kilometers from Bolivia to Brazil. Four of its five lowest water levels were recorded in the last four years, the Brazilian Geological Survey said. In the port city of Porto Velho, the river's level is the lowest since measurements started in 1967. Brazil's fourth largest hydroelectric dam which produces power from water, is in nearby Santo Antonio. It stopped producing power last week for the first time since it opened in 2012. For now, the Brazilian government of President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva is sending food and water to the faraway communities in the northern part of the country. Engineers will start digging paths along dry rivers for boat travel. Payments will soon go to families who cannot work. But the problems will continue, experts say. Photographs of dead dolphins appeared in newspapers and on television programs. Ayan Fleischmann is a hydrologist or a scientist who studies water at the Mamirawa Sustainable Development Institute. It describes itself as a social organization supervised by the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation. He said the photos were a shock for everyone. He said the extreme heat may have hurt the organs of the dolphins or contributed to the growth of harmful bacteria. It was an unprecedented tragedy, he said. Unprecedented means never seen before. 
Experts in Brazil from the National Institute for Space Research say the drought will likely continue until the end of 2023. I'm Dan Friedel. And I'm Ana Mateo. has launched a new program for children. It is called Let's Learn English with Anna. The new course aims to teach children American English through asking and answering questions and experiencing fun situations. For more information, visit our website, learningenglish.boanews.com. Consider almost any social or political issue. It could be local or international. Some people have one idea about the issue, and other people have other ideas about the issue. In other words, people disagree with each other. In this week's Everyday Grammar, we will explore disagreements. We will learn about the verb disagree, and the noun form disagreement. We will learn some important ideas about how to use the terms. Let's start with some history. When we explore individual words, we often look at their histories. Words, like people, grow and change over time. By learning a little about these changes, we can make words more memorable and meaningful to us. So, let's take a look at the verb disagree. Disagree first appeared in English over 500 years ago. The online etymology dictionary tells us that disagree first meant refuse assent to. It came from an old French word, désagréer, a word that we can break into two parts. De meant not, opposite of, and agréé meant to please, satisfy. In English, you might think of these two parts as dis and agree. With time, disagree took on new meanings. About 450 years ago, it took on the meaning of differing in opinion or expressing different views, the online etymology dictionary tells us. Sometime later, we have the birth of the noun form disagreement. We have followed disagree from its beginning, but how do we explain its modern usage? One important idea is that we generally use disagree without an object. So, for example, you might say a simple, complete sentence such as this, I disagree. Or, you might say this, the two sides disagree. But what about more complex sentences, you might ask? Internet data sources can give us some important information about how to do that. Google's Ngram Viewer contains data from many written materials. We can do a careful study of exact words. What Google's Ngram Viewer tells us is that by far the most commonly used word after the verb disagree is the word with. After the word with, we generally have a pronoun, noun, or noun phrase. So, for example, you might hear or read a sentence that involves a pronoun after with, as in, I disagree with you. 
You might hear or read a sentence that has a noun after with, as in, He disagrees with Tom. Or you might hear or read a sentence that has a noun phrase after with, as in, They disagree with these ideas. Or, We disagree with the Prime Minister's policies. What about the noun disagreement, you might ask? Google's Ngram Viewer tells us that, once again, the word with is commonly used after the noun disagreement. So you might hear or read the following. He had a disagreement with his friend. And what words might we use before the noun disagreement? Google's Ngram Viewer tells us we are more likely to hear or read the short word a, as in a disagreement. So you might hear a person say, they had a disagreement. You may have noticed a difference between how we explored disagree and disagreement. We explored words that commonly come before and after disagreement, but we only explored a word that comes after the verb disagree. We did not explore the most common word that comes before disagree. Aside from pronouns, can you guess what the most common word is before the verb disagree? Here is a hint. Think about one short word that we often use before a verb in English. Write us your answer in the comments section on our website or in an email to learningenglish at voanews.com. And thank you for having me on the show. Why did you choose to develop a lesson around the verb disagree and the noun disagreement? If you look at everyday discussions, news reports, or even social media posts, people often disagree. That's natural. The verb disagree and the noun disagreement are the simplest terms to describe such differences in opinions. That's right. And particularly on social media we find disagreements playing out on a large scale. Many people participate in them. Your report suggested the word with most commonly follows the verb disagree and the noun disagreement. But when we talk about social media, we often use on as well. That's right. We say that people disagree with each other on social media. Or you might say they had a disagreement on social media. Yes. With is the most commonly used word with disagree, but when we talk about social media, we often use on. John, do you ever get into disagreements on social media, or do you tend to avoid them? I check social media, but I do not participate in discussions or post material. What about you? Yeah, I also rarely post things in discussions and definitely try to avoid arguments on social media. They can get pretty ugly at times. Yes, it's probably best to stay out of trouble if you can. Well, thanks for answering my questions, John. See you next time. Thanks for having me. our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak.